Hello and good evening. Today we are going to continue our talk about enzymes. Remember last time when we said that enzymes are catalysts that are used inside living cells to reduce the activation energy needed for metabolic reactions. So what is the structure of enzymes? Enzymes are made up of combination of large number of amino acids. And enzymes can be formed from one or more polypeptide chains, which form a special structure of enzymes. They have a structure that is very complicated. It can be formed from one polypeptide chain or multiple polypeptide chains. Polypeptides and amino acids. When we say these words, we think about what? Proteins, exactly. So enzymes are proteins. All the enzymes present in any living cell is protein. So how an enzyme work? This light blue color uh, structure is an enzyme and the dark blue is a substrate. A substrate is the structure or the component, the compound, which the enzyme works on. It is also called the reactant, what we need to break down or combine with something else. So what happens is that we can see here, this have a specific shape that can combine with the specific active side shape present on the surface of the enzyme. So they combine together, forming an intermediate compound, and then the molecule we want to break down or combine maybe is formed, so the product is formed and they leave the enzyme. So what is the properties of enzymes? They are similar to chemical catalysts. They participate in chemical reactions inside the cell to speed up the reaction but without being affected or consumed as we saw in the last slide we saw that the enzyme entered with a specific shape and it exited with the same specific shape and also the amount of enzyme entering the uh, reaction is exactly the same amount of the enzyme exiting the reaction as we can see here, the shape of the enzyme did not change or the amount of the enzyme was not also changed. The second, they are highly specific. So they are specific for one substrate or one reactant and they can only perform one type or very few types of reactions and this is because of the specific shape of the, si the active site that can only combine with very very few structures or reactants. The third is the main function of the enzyme that they are used to reduce the activation energy needed to start the reaction and because they are proteins they are affected by multiple factors especially the pH and the temperature so let's discuss what are the, facti the factors affecting the speed of the enzyme action first we said temperature and hydrogen ion concentration or the pH enzyme concentration substrate concentration, presence of inhibitors. We will discuss the first two in details, but let's uh, see um, briefly what is the effect of enzyme concentration, substrate concentration, and the presence of inhibitors on the speed of the reaction. The enzyme concentration increase the speed of the reaction or the effect of the enzyme until a certain point, until all the substrate is consumed, then the reaction speed is constant. The same for the substrate concentration and the presence of inhibitors, the meaning of inhibitors, something that decreases the effect of the enzyme. So the presence of an inhibitor reduce the effect of the 
enzyme. So let's discuss in details the effect of temperature. Enzymes are sensitive to temperature because they are proteins. Enzymes activity is determined by a narrow range of temperature which is much narrow than chemical catalyst. Each enzyme have a temperature at which the enzyme is most active which we call an optimal temperature. So between these two points is the range in which the enzyme can work. And this is the highest activity of the enzyme, so this is what we call the optimal temperature. So when we start here by increasing the, the temperature, the enzyme activity increases until we reach the optimal temperature. After which, when we increase the temperature, the activity of the enzyme decreases. And in this part, it is reversible. The effect of the temperature is reversible. Until we reach a certain point, after which the enzyme is denaturated, or the nature of the enzyme is changed, after which the effect of temperature cannot be reversed. So from this graph, can you tell me what is the temperature at which enzyme starts activity? Both, yes, 16, around 16, a little bit more than 15. Temperature at which enzyme have maximum activity or the optimal temperature. For A, it's 35, and for B, it's 40. Temperature at which the enzyme stops the activity for both, it's almost 55. So the range for both is between 16 and 55. Can you guess the temperature at which enzyme has maximum activity or optimal temperature in human cells? Exactly, it's 37. And why do some detergents require certain temperature to be more effective? because these detergents have enzymes that have an optimal temperature. They work at this temperature at their highest activity. The second uh, most important factor affecting the activity of the enzyme is the pH or power of hydrogen. pH stands for potential of hydrogen or power of hydrogen or we can call it hydrogen ion concentration. pH is a measurement that determines the concentration of hydrogen ion in a solution and it ranges from 0 to 14. And this is the color that we can get using a litmus paper. These are the different colors and each color represent a, th a certain pH level. So for acidic solutions, the pH is less than 7, so it ranges from 0 to 6.9. This range is acidic. Alkaline or basic solutions have pH higher than 7, so it ranges from 7.1 to 14. And the neutron is exact 7. We don't have a range for neutral solutions, they have to be exactly at 7. So why enzymes are affected by the pH? Do you remember the structure of a protein? It was made up of amino acids. And the amino group was basic group and the acid carboxylic group is an acidic group, so they are affected by base and acids. Also like temperature, each enzyme has an optimal pH at which the enzyme activity is at its maximum efficiency and if the pH is higher or lower than the optimal pH, the enzyme activity decreases until it stops. Exactly like temperature, the effect of the pH is also reversible inside the 
uh, range from here to here, the effect of the pH is reversible. We have very important enzymes inside our body, so we need to adjust the pH inside each organ of our body to the optimal to the optimal pH at which this enzyme work. So if you know that the acidic medium in our stomach caused by the hydrochloric acid, the pH is 1.5 to 3.5. We have an enzyme in our stomach called pepsin. So can you guess what is the optimal pH of the pepsin enzyme? Exactly. It's 1.5 to 2.5, so it works best inside our stomach. On the other hand, our small intestine have an alkaline or basic medium with a pH ranging from 7.5 to 9. So what will happen if pepsin enters our, our uh, small intestine? It will stop working completely. In our small intestine, we have another enzyme that helps in, in digestion. It's called trepsin. And the optimal pH for this enzyme is 7.5 to 8. All other enzymes that works in our body have an optimal pH ranges from 7.4 because it's neutral value that contain that maintain the carboxylic group and the, the amino group at neutral state. So our blood ranges, the pH in our blood ranges from 7.35 to 7.45 to make it neutral or slightly alkaline to be optimal for the effect of all the other enzymes in our body except our stomach and our small intestine. Now we're finished with talking about enzymes. Let's talk about something um, very new in science, which is nanobiopharmaceuticals. Nano means very, very small or tiny, bio related to biology, and pharmaceuticals mean it is related to drugs and pharmacy. Proteins have several vital roles in human body, as we just discussed, because the enzymes are very important uh, to maintain our vital science and organize our, uh, our vital activities. And most, not most, all enzymes, 100% of the enzymes are made up of proteins. So proteins have several vital roles in human body. So we can use different proteins to treat a lot of diseases and disorders. So biopharmaceuticals is the biological macromolecules like proteins that is produced and used in treating diseases and disorders. The disadvantage of the biopharmaceuticals, it is difficult to deliver and target them to a certain body part. So they may have lots of side effects. What is the solution of this disadvantage? We can use nanoparasites, which are very, very tiny carrier. They carry the biopharmaceutical to target a specific organ or a specific disorder in our body. The science is called biopharmaceutics and the products are called biopharmaceuticals. This is it for me today. Hope you enjoyed our lesson about enzymes and see you next time. Have a great day.